Here we have a Series 9 Super Gen. This one just happens to have white caps on it. And here's what it looks like up close. And we'll see if we can get into it for you so you can see it. All right. Here is our fill and view port, our gas out. Over here, we have our power relay. Over here, we have our uh, water control relay, which works in conjunction with the reserve tank and also works in conjunction with this solenoid valve and this liquid level sensor switch which is located right here. And now the unit is turned on right now but of course the engine is not running. But as you can see we right now are showing zero volts. But if we turn around and put the positive side of a multimeter to it, right now we're conducting approximately five volts DC to the unit. And that's being controlled by, if you follow the red wires, over here. And that is what we have as a pulse width modulator right here. And if you look closely, you'll see on the side there's a knob, which we can turn around and turn that down. And then go back to the meter right here and touch it. And now it reads only the charge that's inside the gen itself and sitting dead it's about 1.61 volts dead but now we'll go back and we'll turn it back up again and we'll go and adjust it and we'll come back again and we'll ground it out right there against the stainless steel canister and we're back up 4.71 volts so the pulse width modulator you can adjust your voltage up and down to suit your vehicle and get the best response you can. We use about five volts on this particular vehicle so let me move this up just a little bit. We'll go over and we'll readjust it. We'll move it up just a hair and then we'll come back. Oh, I knocked over my multimeter. Let's see if we can get it in place and we'll go back here and we are roughly at about 5.06 volts. So there you can see the way it works. Right now we are producing hydrogen, but the engine's not running right now. All right, and so now you know we have a variable here using the uh, pulse width modulator. Now if we come back to the gen, the way this is set up with a dual feed, all right, here's the outbound from the gen, and as it travels, it goes around, it splits to a Y. There's a safety valve here a safety valve there. This one goes off, goes to another Y, and that goes down, if you follow it, and goes into the throttle body assemblies right over here, here and down here on a Ford. That's a dual throttle body right there. Now the other one, when we go back, it splits with the gas valve and goes directly to the intake manifold right over here. So what happens when we're idling, we have about 17 inches of vacuum all of the HHO at an idle because the throttle bodies are closed ends up going through here. But when we step on the gas, what happens then is it comes over and it ends up going through these over here. Because these two valves that are sitting here, right here and here, they switch back and forth according to the vacuum. And of course they're backed up back here again with another safety valve. And that's pretty much how it all works and when it calls for water what happens is this solenoid valve governed by that liquid level switch right there when the water gets low what will happen is a switch will turn around it'll open up or close and it'll make this open up and then from the vacuum created from the engine it will actually draw the water out of the reserve tank over there and bring the water up and around and through down this line through the valve and then finally it'll go in right here. And that's about the way it works with a Series 9 Supergen. This is the latest model that's out and you can see how it's mounted to the front clip. All right, And there's a picture of it right there, the way it's mounted and grounded. And if you go over here, there's the main power line right here. You'll see it that goes in. And we follow that along through the clip and come back and you'll see the whole system is protected with a fuse and of course your two relays, your solenoid, your mounting, your fill and view port right here 
and that's pretty much all that's there besides the pulse width modulator right there and that's it so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go around with the engine not running I'm going to go around to the cab and it's a little messy because we're working but we're going to go around here and we're going to take and crank the key and start the truck up is what we're going to do so bear with me a second and we'll take a look in here and you'll be able to see the amp meter is right there. Let me see if I can zoom in on it. As you can see, if you look close enough, I'll turn the switch, which is over here, I'll turn it off and the needle will move. It goes off, the needle drops. Turn it on and the needle goes up. So you see we're only pushing about, oh, maybe four or five amps right now. Now we're going to start the unit up. There we go. And it moved up just a little bit more. Here we go. We'll show it off. And we'll show it on. Now we'll come back outside again. Here's the unit here again. A little noisy. It's cold. That's a cold start. Let me boost the throttle to slow it down. There we go. And now we'll go back to our voltmeter, which we've got sitting right here at zero volts. And we'll take the positive lead and we'll put it down to the canister, down there on the stainless steel jacket. And as you can see, we're running about 5.4 volts. And that's more than enough to do what we have to do. So there you go, a Super uh, Gen Series 9, cold start, governed at 5.4 volts, and it started up cold with roughly about, oh, 4 or 5 amps. And when it warms up, it'll go up to about 8 amps, and it works quite well. So that's about it. So that's just a general little info type of commercial for you here, and I hope, you know, it answered some of your questions. I thank you much, and have yourself a good day. Bye-bye.